Welcome back to another torch review. Today I have the S2A baton. This was sent to me by Olight for review, so I'll run through the details as I normally do. On the bottom here you'll see a maximum output of 550 lumens. On the right hand side is the QR code that takes you to the website. We have two lithium batteries, 1.5 volts included. And on the back this runs through a bit of the specs and details. We have a Cree XML2 LED. And on the back section at the bottom this lists out the power and run times so we have 550 lumens right down to half a lumen in the moonlight mode at five power levels taking the torch out of the box you see that you have the hand or wrist strap tucked around under the flap now you remove the rubber ring this isn't a, a ceiling ring for the main torch, it's just for the packaging. And then looking at the torch, you'll notice there is this uh, silicone finish on the handle instead of the usual, more typical knurling. And it's actually quite strong. It feels quite um, stiff and resistant rather than really soft and subtle. So hopefully that will hold up and not get damaged. You'll see on that section, it's a bit flatter as well. And you've got some ridges on it. This is the wrist strap that's included. You'll see the pin here so that you can slot it through on the base cap easily and you have an adjuster. User manual here runs through pretty much the same thing but note that the specifications and run times are listed for alkaline and the lithium batteries which are included. You'll get somewhat longer run times compared to the alkaline with nickel metal hydride. This goes through the power and operation modes. You also have a timer with this. Direct access to turbo, strobe modes, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, it's shorter than most of the Olight manuals. And looking at the top here, we have a special lens on the section here, which gives it a sort of more diffused, wider angle beam. And we've seen that on some previous torches like the S1R Baton 2. The switch is fairly flush with the body. You can see the traditional blue ring that Olight have included on both the switch and on the top of the flashlight. Clip can be removed. It's a little bit longer than some of the baton ones that I've looked at, in particular the S1R, but it can be reversed, although it does stick out a little bit. Just another close-up shot showing you the grip on the torch body. I actually quite like this. I had mixed feelings at first whether this would um, work for me. I'm used to the um, aluminium body, the Type 3, which this is made from the rest of the torch uh, across the entire body of the torch, but it actually feels pretty good. And it also works quite well, even if it's wet or damp. Another advantage is that it won't get cold if you're outside. There's a plastic protector there for the batteries. Remove that and you have the two lithium cells. Now these are okay, I generally use these as backups. Lithiums do hold storage very well, but um, I generally use nickel metal hydride. I've got some any loops here, but there are other brands out there with slightly higher capacities than this. I just think for a longer term use, it makes more sense. But the lithiums are uh, decent to have included in the pack or as a backup. You can see here we have a spring in the tail cap section. There's also a spring in the main body of the torch prevents movement and these are the items laid out the batteries are in the torch do note that that o-ring isn't a spare o-ring it's actually just for the packaging so that's something which is missing from this pack in my opinion now the operation on this is typical o-light for a single button on the side push it to turn it on and then you can push and hold for a short time to switch through the power modes or you can hold it down and it will cycle through and just release when you want note that you won't have access to the moonlight mode unless you push and hold. You can see it here, very low output, half a lumen. Instant access to turbo as well. And if you double click, you get the strobe mode. This is the timer settings. You have two settings for this, so you can have it turn off after three or nine minutes and it flashes either once or twice to let you know that you're in that mode. It's a handy if you tend to leave torches on. The base isn't magnetic on this, which isn't surprising considering the length. It's gonna to need to be a fairly strong magnet to hold that. I'm just comparing it to a typical 18650 EDC type torch. And this is the Lumen Top EDC 25. As you can see, it's a bit shorter and it's definitely quite a bit thinner with the width and girth. 
the lumen top has two buttons just a single button on the o-light so it's a, a reasonable amount smaller than your average 18650 although i have used some shorter ones we're on to the waterproof test now i just leave this for about half an hour in water and there's no problems as you would expect and a quick drop test from around about one meter just to test to make sure everything's fine This is the moonlight mode at half a lumen. As you can see, it's a very nice low output. So if you're a fan of the super low output modes on torches, you will be quite happy with this. Also means you'll be able to conserve battery power. Quick beam shot showing you the distribution. That uh, optic on the lens really does a nice job of spreading out the light very evenly, giving you a nice diffused look. Now the silicone grip on the torch is also uh, luminous, so it glows in the dark. And you can see here it's uh, showing up quite nicely. That lasts for a couple of hours though, so perhaps it could have lasted a bit longer, but it's uh, a neat little sort of extra to have. We'll start with the S2A, which is what we're reviewing. This test is around about 90 to 100 foot, and I'm cycling through the power settings now. You can see when you get up to the top settings, it really does open up quite nicely. It won't quite have the power output of some of the lithium torches, and I have the S1R baton here. This goes up to 900 lumens, so it has a bit more power. It can't maintain that for very long though, and you're gonna get the advantage of longer run times with two cells on the S2A torch. This is my standard wide angle test that I do. All the torches I do from this angle, just to give you an idea of the illumination. You can see a very even light distribution, and then we'll start moving up through the power settings. Now the turbo mode can hold for about three minutes and then it will gradually move down to the uh, high level, which is still quite bright. This is at the turbo mode now. It's nice to have that option to punch up the light if you need it. And this will give you a beam shot, a uh, wider angle, closer up, about seven or eight foot distance. You can see the light spreads out very nicely at the higher power levels. This is the telephoto test that I do. You can see good even coverage across the frame. And once you've kicked it up to the higher power levels, you'll see the light spreads out quite nicely. Not a big range torch, this, and you can see here on the roof, nice wide dispersion on the light. Um, they're just over about 100 meters range. So this isn't for someone that wants a big distance, but it does illuminate the area quite nicely. This is in the half a lumen moonlight mode inside, and it's just about bright enough to see if you've slightly adjusted vision, you won't have any problems using this. A lot of people like that super low output mode. Onto the tree test, again, it's lighting up the whole frame quite nicely. You won't see that concentrated spot that you can see with some torches. So this is really designed for more closer up use. And a test down the side of the house. You can barely see the moonlight mode on there. And then we're kicking up to the low onto the medium and then we're going up to the top power settings as you can see the whole frames lit up very nicely on this it really does have a nicely dispersed uh, light effect and uh, not all the torches have this the candela rating is actually very low on this torch and it's pretty similar to the s1r which i've been using quite a bit you can see here more close-up shot showing you some of the power levels for close-up work, really, you're going to be looking at using the lower settings. Um, I find the mid is quite a bright one. It's up to about sort of 120 lumens. Showing the difference now, moonlight to the low mode. That's a fairly decent jump, but the low mode will give you longer run times as well. Onto the strobe, have fairly rapid firing flashing mode on this. This is the only one that's included. There's no SOS, and it's also quite useful for finding burnt toast in the garden. No cats on this video tonight. They weren't uh, they weren't in the mood for going out. On the medium setting, I find this pretty good general purpose setting. It gives you enough illumination to get reasonable distances and lights things up quite nicely. So if I was walking down a path or out and about at night, this is the setting that I would be using. You don't necessarily always use the top settings unless you need to get that extra bit of range. There is one feature that it does have is it glows in the dark with the light it seems to be coming from the torch light emitter itself rather than being an led that just shows you where the power button is i perhaps would have gone with a 
uh, power indicator with that but um, that's a little bonus feature that's included it can be a little bit tricky to find the power button on this because of the shape and the slim size so what I would normally do is rotate the clip around next to it so wrapping up with a summary on the S2A uh, interesting torch for really for users who are into the AA cells this is certainly a viable option you have the two batteries and that means you're going to have quite a decent power output from this compared to a single cell AA and you're also going to have longer run times as well so I like the beam pattern on this and the silicone grip was actually quite comfortable and very nice to hold and you also have that super low lumen mode the only thing that I would say is the bundle was a bit basic I would have liked a spare o-ring and perhaps a holster for a torch of this length and also the lockout on the side switch would be something that I would like to see included on a future model but quite a nice torch don't forget if you are interested in torches and other items that I review, subscribe or leave a comment below and I will see you in the next video.